Motorcyclists are very different. There are cruiser boys, sport bike chads, off-road gatekeepers, and ADV dads. And while each are vastly different embodying their own cringeworthy stereotypes, there is one thing that unifies us all, and I'm not talking about daddy issues. It is the love of modifying our motorcycles. We like making our bikes go faster to give them a unique or personal style, or to just clean up the look by doing away with gaudy government-issued safety equipment. But little did you know, many of these modifications are actually illegal in most states. The FBI actually just did a raid of our Discord server and issued 400 misdemeanor violations and 900 felonies for various degrees of illegal modifications. Granted, a majority of those were for felonious use of hentai rap, but still, many riders have likely done at least one illegal motorcycle mod to their bike, but luckily for us, most police officers or safety inspectors are as ignorant to these laws as most riders are so we can continue to break the law in peace. Without further ado, here are seven illegal motorcycle mods that are going to put you in prison for life. Let's get into it. Before we do get started, I wanted to take a quick second to give you an update on our newest yammynoob.co giveaway motorcycle. We currently have a Trident 660 up for grabs. If you're not familiar, these are a neat little roadster from Triumph that's a great platform for a rider who wants a balance between retro style and fun, peppy performance. For just this week only, all orders on yammynoob.co will get automatic 10 times entries for the giveaway, plus all orders over 150 bucks will receive a free t-shirt of your choice. So don't sleep on this one, head over to the site and grab some merch or some gear to get entered to win this cool little bike. Now let's get into the video. The first illegal motorcycle modifications that many riders do is the installation of a full system exhaust. I think Uncle Sam has some sort of exhaust fetish because it's all the government ever talks about in regards to cars or motorcycles. Exhaust this, emissions that, it never ends with them. The only people who love catalytic converters more than the FDA are sawzall wielding thieves in Detroit, Michigan. But despite all this, many people install full system exhausts that remove the catalytic converters that come on their bike equipped with the factory. In defense of such modifications, motorcycles didn't even come equipped with cats until the mid 2000s, and even then it was dependent on the end engine displacement. Many states that do vehicle inspections don't do emissions testing for motorcycles and instead only check the function of safety equipment like brakes, lighting, and tire tread. A common and legal exhaust modification is to install a slip-on exhaust. This keeps the header pipes and catalytic converter intact while only replacing the muffler tip. This doesn't change much in the way of engine performance or exhaust emissions, but just changes the sound of the bike to be more appealing and often cleans up the look, doing away with the big bulky muffler that comes stock on motorcycles. But on some bikes, like those from Harley-Davidson or Yamaha's MT-07 for example, the catalytic converter is built into the muffler, so by removing those to install a slip-on exhaust, you're actually doing away with government-mandated emissions equipment. But what is strange is a dealership will still do these mods for you and it will pass inspection in most places maybe other than California. But I've heard even there the inspectors looking at your bike often have no clue what they're looking at, just pass it anyways. Companies can get away with selling these catless exhaust systems by selling them for quote race use only or quote off-road use only, depending on the bike that they're designed for. These systems will not only just omit the government issued emissions equipment, but also likely leave a motorcycle operating at a decibel level higher than permitted for road use. The specific rules and regulations will vary depending on where you live in the age of your motorcycle, but by and large, it seems like most motorcyclists have no problem running catless exhaust on their bikes in most parts of the country. And for those who have stringent restrictions, they just put the stock equipment back on for once a year on their inspection. Another common motorcycle mod that most riders do is removing the big, huge, dumb, ugly whale tail fender license plate holder that comes on like every stock motorcycle nowadays. Like a motorcycle will have a fender and then they slap this big, dumb plastic crap on it additionally. Removal of this component is not illegal in itself as long as it is replaced with a license plate holder that maintains proper lighting and visibility, but this isn't always the case for many squids. They'll buy the cheapest universal license plate holder they can find on Amazon that doesn't have any sort of lighting built in, then they'll rip off the old fender and bolt up their license plate in a way that reduces visibility. In order to legally remove your dumb stock fender, the eliminator kit you must use keeps the original plate mounted in a visible position and includes a light. If your turn signals were on the original fender as well, they must be installed on the back of your new smaller fender eliminator as well. Like I said, many squids will just rip the whole thing off which removes the license plate light as well as the turn signals and then to just only run a tail light and license plate. 
Although these OEM fenders are absolutely hideous, remember they still do serve a function and prevent road debris and water from being flung up onto you and to other vehicles on the road. So just be warned that removing the fender, you are more likely to get splattered with grime from the road conditions if they should become less than ideal. The necessity of turn signals on a motorcycle varies by state. Some states permit the use of hand signals in place of turn signals, while other states don't even allow the use of integrated turn signals that are built into an existing taillight or headlight because they do not provide visibility from all angles. And still, some people will delete their turn signals in a state that requires them and never have an issue because cops or safety inspectors either don't know or don't care. Or maybe if they pull over a squid for going 186 miles per hour on the freeway, they'll be more concerned about them going double the speed limit without current registration or insurance than about the missing turn signals. Or maybe that's the situation where they'll just throw the book at you for every single violation and then impound your bike and put you in jail. You never know! That's why it's important to at least know the laws, that way you can determine which you feel comfortable breaking at any given time. This is, of course, satire. Don't break any laws. But if you were in the mood to do so, I'd opt for the turn signal violation as opposed to reckless driving. But if you're being pulled over solely for not having turn signals, it sounds like you live in a police state and I would pursue residents elsewhere. With the amount of people I see blatantly texting or scrolling social media while driving, I would really hope law enforcement would pursue cracking down on that instead of illegal motorcycle mods. It's also illegal to remove the mirrors from your motorcycle. That is pretty universal in the matter where you live. Some states require both, while others require you at least run one mirror. Are there squids with the cafe racer dorks who run zero? Absolutely, and they probably get away with it too most of the time. But just because you may not be immediately punished by law enforcement the minute you remove them doesn't mean that a motorcycle modification that would be recommended by experienced riders. A motorcycle is small, dwarfed by the gargantuan SUVs and pickup trucks that dominate American roadways, so we kind of need every advantage we can get when it comes to eluding our oversized aggressors. And the ability to see behind you while riding on public roads is actually pretty nice. Not something I'd really care to do without, to be honest. Some people remove their mirrors entirely, while others opt to install bar-end mirrors. Bar-end mirrors aren't necessarily illegal, but they're often cheap and flop around or shake so bad at speed you can't see a damn thing out of them anyway. If you're genuinely disgusted by the look of your stock mirrors, which I will admit can often be a little hard on the eyes, look into a tasteful pair of aftermarket ones that will clean up your bike as well as add some panache. If you've only ever bought used or secondhand motorcycles, you may not even have considered this, but you know those dumb reflectors that come on motorcycles from the factory? You know, the ones that make them look like a Walmart brand mountain bike? Yeah, it's actually illegal to remove those. Which is funny to consider because if you own a bike you bought secondhand, it very well may never have had those to begin with since the bike has been in your possession. But yeah, it turns out it's illegal to do away with them. Which is a little ridiculous when you think about it. Do a handful of tiny reflectors on your motorcycle really make it that much more visible in comparison to just the normal OEM lighting equipment? And a motorcycle that can meet modern safety standards quote unquote, while still being sold with halogen lights and a drum brake in the rear, yet the owner's supposed to be deterred from removing the reflectors on their motorcycle that has an LED headlamp, taillight, and turn signals which arguably offer more visibility than a bike with crappy lighting and cheap looking reflectors. Back when I was growing up, if you had reflectors on your pedal bike, you were an absolute nerd. But then again, you were also a nerd if you wore a helmet when jumping a skateboard down a flight of 15 stairs, which I never wore a helmet. I'm all about being safe on a motorcycle nowadays and visibility is important, but if I spend upwards of 20 grand on a brand new motorcycle, cycle, I do not want it laden with tacky reflectors. It is also annoying to remove them too. The reflectors are either stuck on the fork tubes with glue and you have to use a heat gun and wire to pop them off and scrub the tube down with goo gone. Not that I've ever done that, of course. Or they are bolted on, which you need to find replacement bolts to fill the holes after finding out specific bolt lengths and thread size on the model specific forums. Not that I'm saying it's really easy to find out information on how to conveniently remove the reflectors on most bikes on the road today. I would never say that. It's also illegal to modify the lighting on your motorcycle. As I already mentioned, there are specific regulations in regard to the license plate lights and your turn signals, but there are also laws specifying what you can and cannot do with other lighting on your motorcycle. So first off, you need, of course, a headlight and a tail light that doubles as a brake light when the brakes are engaged. That's common sense. I don't see too many people out there doing headlight deletes on street brakes. But the weight savings, bro! A motorcycle headlight must also have a high beam function. The other laws in place are mostly in consideration to the color of the lights. Some jurisdictions have specific regulations regarding headlight color. For example, using colored headlights like red or blue may be prohibited. In many states, it's also illegal to install LED chassis lights. You know, those LED underglow strips that cringe bagger guys and jigster squids alike will install on their bikes. If there was ever a law that I could fully get behind, it's the banning of LED underglow. Not only does LED underglow make everyone else on the road aware that your parents 
parents or first cousins, it also serves as a distraction to other drivers, especially if you have an underglow that changes colors or pulsates the music you're playing, like Mambo Number no. 5. Ah! In certain situations, the lights may confuse other drivers who may mistake them for braking or hazard lights. Just say no to LED underglow. And the last modification may definitely come as a surprise to other motorcycle vloggers or content creators. Despite the popularity of action camera use on a motorcycle, it is actually illegal in many states to have anything affixed to your helmet, including a camera. I guess this makes sense in some capacity. If you have a GoPro mounted on your helmet and you crash, it may impede the functionality of the helmet or just end up piercing through the shell and end up recording the inside of your skull. Morbid, but possible, I guess. Probably incredibly unlikely, but how should I know? I'm not a doctor. I'm barely a person. I might be a sentient dog. This law also means that you are unable to have a pink pony mane, spikes, or any other adornments on the top or sides of your helmet, as they not only damage your ego, but could potentially harm your body as well. This law would technically extend to the use of side-mounted comm systems, but this is likely one of those laws that was created before the advent of any of these technologies and has just stayed on the books ever since. But law enforcement may treat you a little funny if they pull you over only to realize you've got a synthetic phallus suction cup to the top of your awry. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. How many of you do I need to report to the authorities? I'm not gonna report any of you. I'm not a freaking narc. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You're not gonna wanna miss the new content while you're in prison. Fact, in Chico, California, there exists a peculiar law that explicitly forbids the detonation of a nuclear device within city limits. While highly improbable, this ordinance serves as a precautionary measure rather than a realistic expectation. Goodbye. Keep watching Yammy Noob.